Welcome back to another episode of Inside Boxing Live. Usual suspects are here. I'm Dan Canobio. He is the former world champion, Chris Algieri. Ronnie Jerez is also here, our super producer. We're back from Vegas. We're thawing out. Um, not having the right work because we're so damn hot there. Yeah. Um, we're coming down from a big fight weekend. I'm starting to feel a little bit like a human being after spending 72 hours plus in Vegas. Chris, can you say the same? Yeah, no, I feel I definitely feel the same way. I'm, the, <laughs> the uh, and it's 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 got its own type of hangover, Vegas, because you just you don't sleep well. You get up super early because you're on the East Coast time. You're super dehydrated nonstop because it's 115 degrees and and it's don't worry, it's dry heat. Nah, man, come on, one one fifteen is one fifteen. And you're leaving out the the biggest part, Chris, is that you take your red eye guy. Like the minute we we closed our laptops, we're done for the weekend. We did our post fight pod from that tent. You were gone. You were, there was like, yeah. you were like freaking Superman. You were got, and he's on a red right. eye. The red eye is right crazy, but it's also like you woke up in your own bed, but that's gotta be a crazy feeling. Yeah. I mean, I went, I went full right back to Clark Kent. I went Superman during the show and then Clark Kent just to get on the plane and get home. I go, oh, nope, leaving boxing behind him. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I slept the entire flight, which was really nice. Got home at seven 30. I was back in, in, in Fort Lauderdale and then was home in my bed, slept a couple, another couple hours. I didn't feel that bad on Sunday, honestly. Okay. But right. the multiple day hangover after that was yes. pretty rough. The, the hangover, it's like two hangovers. There's the regular Vegas hangover, then there's the Crawford Spence hangover. Right. Of, big fight hangover. Big fight hangover. Not only was it a big fight week hangover, it was Fulton in a way. It was Spence mm -hmm. Crawford. Now we're looking at the August schedule. I'm like, oh, there's a couple good fights. This, you know, this weekend it's Jake Paul and Nate Diaz, if you're into that. Um, next weekend, Navarrete. Uh, and Valdez, it kind of slowly builds. They may build up to Canelo Charlo when it comes to like big, big time fights. But uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking a lot about the Spence Crawford aftermath. It's what's still in the news right now. Um, wow. I mean, uh, Bud Crawford's getting his flowers, Chris. I mean, rightfully so. Um, punch stats are insane. I know we talked about it a little bit. 60% power, 50% overall, 40% jabs. And when we're perceived as a 50 50 fight, is insane like we're talking about an all-time great performance you know in a sport where it's not like baseball or football or basketball there's games like you're you are immortalized off of singular performances like you versus Ruslan Bravodnikov is your moment like you have to have a great night out there and Terrence Crawford had a night where he became like an immortal because he beat Spence in a 50-50 fight and did it in like dominant fashion and he did it against a bad dude, man. It's, Errol Spence has been uh, wreaking havoc in that division for years and close to a decade. So uh, you, you can't take away from Errol Spence just because it was so one-sided. Like he's, he was still a bad man. He's still a bad man. Um, and, and what Crawford was able to do is, I mean, it's mind blowing. Uh, he, he is, he's legit and all time great. What about, um, did you see the clip of Crawford jawing at Jamel Charlo? In the yeah, this was after the second knockdown for Spence. So the fight it was starting to get out of reach, but it wasn't like towards the end of the fight. He's looking over when Spence was really out of it. And he's looking over at Jamel saying, You're next. He told Jamel, You're next, like third round when he was putting a beat down on Spence. That right there was a guy that was in like an ultimate zone. Yeah, I mean that's he's a bad, bad man. <laughs> To be able to think outside of what's happening right in front of him with a in it, the biggest fight of his life to be able to be like, listen, I got this guy that much. I can I can talk shit on the sidelines. Not only that, too, like the Eminem, something we didn't hit on um, after the fight. Um, we were there in the arena when Eminem came out. The music like I've never seen. A, I've heard a pop like that for a ring walk. Spence's face dropped. It was just like an immaculate night from Crawford from the minute he walked on that ring walk with Eminem. To in the ring, his fight fit, <laughs> then goes in there and just puts up like I think it's Brian Campbell tweeted to land sixty percent of your power shots in a fight of this magnitude is like scoring eighty points in NBA Game Seven. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> to, I mean, six. That's that's not even that's like video game numbers. That's like one side of beating in a video game. That's crazy. Well, you know who was the the second most um, highest the second highest percentage of power shots landed on Spence in a fight. Um, let me think. Do, 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 Porter? Do, do, do. Chris Algieri. Really? 37%. Wow. Bob okay. Canobio sent me that stat too late after we had closed up our laptop and you were already in the air. 
Wow, you should have sent me that. Anyway. That would have been uh, <laughs> nice to hear. Thirty-seven percent. Uh, Chris Argyri landed on Spence. Sixty percent for Crawford. I'm glad Crawford's getting his flowers. I'm glad he's getting his due. A guy that was frozen out of a lot of big fights, politics of the sport. Uh, a lot of it was his own doing. Re-signing with Top Rank um, at age thirty-two, or I think, or uh, when he could have. Uh, went over to the PBC, so it was a little bit of both. A little of him getting frozen out, kind of like Golovkin. Like Golovkin didn't get that first Canelo fight until he was 35. Um, I thought he won that first Canelo fight. Uh, but for Crawford, I just wish he was just younger, right? I wish he was like 30 because he's 35, but from here on out, it should only be big fights for Crawford. Do wish he was like 30 years old because I think he's someone that you can re- – his whole marketing thing now is like come out and watch one of the best to ever lace him up because – Obviously, we know with him, he's not going to, like, sell fights with his mouth. He's not uh, the most marketable guy. But for him now, like, he's in a whole nother stratosphere when it comes to, like, come see an all-time great. Literally. I mean, while you can. while uh, we, have a, we have a living legend now. So that's that's the marketing there. And it's, it's unfortunate because it's not his fault that he wasn't in bigger fights sooner. You know, he was kind of barred out for a while. People just were not not giving him his flowers, not giving his just due, um, which we all know why is because he wasn't getting into these big fights. But now it's like, man, how much of Terrence Crawford's prime did we miss? Yeah. Oh, well, it's partially, partially his fault, partially because of the re-signing with top rank. When he re-signed with top rank, I criticized it at the time. He was just content. Like he's a guy that's just maybe content with the 5 million guarantee to fight an old Brook or an old Amir Khan. He was fine with that. So that was something that he decided. But there were a lot of times where they tried to go over to PBC and make bigger fights, whether it was with Spence or whether it was with Porter more towards his prime. Uh, but that's all in the past. There's nothing you can do about it now. We have to enjoy him now. He's number one pound for pound. I probably have in a way second. But if you look at the top four pound for pound, once again, I'll, I'll say it again. I, I like the top four. If you have um, Crawford, in a way, Usyk, Bivol, and that's a pretty skilled top four. Like that's like when I look at old ring magazines and I see like like Roy Jones, Mike Tyson, and like Holyfield, like guys in their top four. I'm like, damn, that was a great time for fans. Like, not only are we living in a time where like the best fights are being made, but these are some like high skilled fighters that we're being able to watch that are at the top of these pound for pound lists. Yeah, and that's how it should be. You're looking at the best of the best, and it doesn't matter which. We do this hypothetical thought. We always talk about how much we hate these these comparisons because they're not they're not real. They're they're very subjective. They're totally subjective. But um, but yeah, no, you you want them to be the best of the best and the guys that have the most skill set, um, and are just you know, uh, 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 just to watch them is amazing. You know, you're watching the best of the best in the best sport in the world. Yeah, would you agree that those are the top four though? Like, uh, Crawford, Inoue, Usyk, Bivol. The Mount Rushmore, um, Chris Algieri's yeah, Mount I, Rushmore. I'm put a camera right in your face, like I did in Vegas. Yeah, I think I think that's 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 solid. I mean, the, yeah, I mean, the only other argument would be Canelo, but like he's long, he's uh, he's not the same guy he was, and also he got beat by Bivol. Um, you know, I really want to see what happens with Better Be of Bivol because I think if Bivol wins that fight, which I actually think he would, um, it would really solidify him mm-hmm. in that top four and that Rushmore. Um, but I also, when I think about pound for pound, I think about well, who beats who. And I look at Bivol's style, and I just, dude, I, I, that's a hard style to deal with. That in and out, that constant movement, that never getting tired, and like, what? Who's going to beat him? So, right. yeah, I, I would agree that Bivol does cap that out. I'd have Canelo at five. Like, I'm for someone that doesn't I like mean, pound I for usually, pound lists, I'm, usually I'm like making this with Canelo and Bivol yeah. four and five. Right, I I would like put Bivol over him because simply he beat him in the ring. Yeah. So we saw it with our own eyes. Um, yeah, that's what's going on with that. What's going and on with Drift? I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that because he beat him at seventy five. But I think Bivol could actually make sixty eight and beat him there too. So it's it's a little. Well, bit we're of not going to see that. And, that. and we're also not going to see uh, Better Be of Calum Smith this month because Better Be of. Did you see that he's like oh, a tooth man. infection in his jaw? Like that sounds really <sighs> brutal. So yeah, um, I didn't see. I didn't see any detailed reports. I didn't see any photos or anything like that. But that sounds rough. Yeah, August. August has taken a hit a little bit with that fight being out. We still have Valdez uh, Navarrete, which I think is like the crown jewel of the month. That's August twelfth. Uh, Jake Paul, uh, Nick Diaz, uh, Nate Diaz this weekend. Serrano versus Hardy. Joshua versus White is this month. Uh, Usyk versus Dubois. Jared Anderson is back. I'll be working an MVP card. You'll be working. An- have you revealed that yet, or I should not reveal it yet? Yeah, right? overtime. I'll overtime. Overtime card. Chris mm-hmm. is uh, one of the voices on Overtime Boxing, uh, which they're putting some stuff on the zone. So we're everywhere, folks. And you know who also is everywhere, Chris? 
the DraftKings Sportsbook. We're going to play a little game here. After I read, do this read right here, we're going to see how fast I can get through that very, very long disclaimer. But first, I have to tell you about new customers. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code IBL. We have our own code now. You bet just $5 to score $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code IBL only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. I told you all out there to take Crawford 7 through 12. Uh, that hit for plus 450, and a lot of people took that bet, so congrats. Now, here we go, folks. Can we get this in under one minute? Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelpline.ma.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. In West Virginia, you got a gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races in Connecticut. Help is available for problem call one uh, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org 21 plus the most eligible states but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. One boost per eligible game. Opt-in required. Max bet $50. 10 plus leg required for 100% boost. Eligibility, <laughs> eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions reply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash baseball terms. Dude, oh, I thought that was done like six different times. <laughs> uh, you just kept going. How long was also, that running? We got we to gotta get you in the gym, bud. We got to uh, get that, that lung capacity. Dude, up. I'm out of breath. If uh, you're doing these long reads, you're going to need lung capacity, and that, that, that ain't it right now. Clocked in at a minute 12. All right, 12 seconds over. We can work on that. Cut yeah. that down to a minute. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you were, if you did some did some stairs, you'd probably get that in. Also, like, I feel like I'm, I'm about to black out. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> Algeri. Algeri Thursday night in Vegas. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming right off a flight. I'm working all night long. Yeah. That second martini was not necessary. We ate a flower. Oh. oh boy, we ate some type of oh. flour, folks. Like Szechuan, Szechuan flour. We ate a flour that was supposed to like change your taste buds. Yeah, it changed my it changed my night. That's what it changed. <laughs> I, I haven't felt the same since. I felt, yeah, I'm on a high still. Um, yeah, so let's go into Terrence Crawford. Perfect segue. Let's go into Terrence Crawford's next move, Chris. Um, we're we're asking the questions about. Crawford, what's next? That's what's always thing. I loved when you said that on the post fight. It's like the guy just got done doing the thing, and now we're looking for the next thing. But that's just the nature of the beast. That's just the nature of boxing. Like I want to see Crawford. I have no. I really don't think he has anything at one forty seven besides boots. I want to see Crawford at one fifty four. Jamel Charlo was always the fight I wanted to see. They were building it up. They've been talking trash for years. Charlo was part of Spence's camp. There's built-in narratives with that. On top of it, I just think it's a really good fight. Like Jamel Charlo is should be in the top ten of everyone's pound for pound list. He's undisputed at 154 pounds. Love that fight at 154. Much rather see Crawford do that than a rematch with Spence. But the problem with that fight is that Jamel Charlo was moving up to 168 pounds to fight Canelo. If he loses a fight to Canelo, does that lose some of the luster of a, of a Charlo Crawford fight? If he beats Canelo at 154, there's obviously going to be a rematch. Terrence Crawford, like we said earlier in this show, is 35 years old. He can't sit around and wait anymore for big fights. He needs to just go right into a big fight in the next six, seven months. As bad as I want to see Crawford versus Mel Charlo, like that ain't happening anytime soon. So that leaves like a Spence rematch or that leaves a Boots at 147, which would be electric. Yeah, uh, there's too many impediments to that that Jamel Charlo fight. I don't don't hold your breath on that one, Dan. It's just there's way too much. The timeline doesn't line up. Right. Um, it's unfortunate, you know. And and you know who do you blame for that? Because that is a mega fight. Uh, who do you blame? Do you blame Canelo because he's tying up these guys and bringing guys from other weight classes? Do you blame Jamal Charlo for not being ready to actually fight Canelo because it could be him in there, which would keep his his brother Good point. available for for spent for uh for Crawford. Um. I, I don't love the the boots fight. I think all the fights that Crawford should be looking for are going to be super mega fights and boots doesn't have that signature win and he just needs more seasoning. He's so young to go up and fight literally the power from best guy in the world at that age. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's it, it, the, the, the fight deserves more than that. No, I agree with you. Um, you make good points there. Like boots, yeah. like the boots is big, but he's, that's not a mega fight. No, not a mega fight, unfortunately. And and that's no knock on boots and his skill set. It's just, you know, we're, we're talking guys, we're talking, we're talking money, right? Yeah. We're talking eyes. We're talking who knows who's looking, who's seeing, who's tuning in. Um, and that's where I mean by super mega fight for, for Terrence Crawford. He, that's what he deserves at this point. You know, yeah. he's, he's hasn't been in these major fights. This is, you know, his first big major fight and, and he performed the way he did. So, you know, give, give that man all the big fights. Yeah. And especially, uh, just to put some numbers behind it, uh, I think it was like the sixth biggest gate in the history of Las Vegas. It did 20, Damn. 22 million, uh, just a million below tank Ryan. Um, well, pay-per-view numbers haven't came out yet, but that's what we're talking about. You don't go from doing gates like that. Not saying that a boots gate wouldn't do wouldn't do great. But it's not a huge like commercial it's not fight. Do that well, but it also is like an indictment on like 147. Like there are no big fights at 147 for Crawford um, outside of a Spence rematch uh, at that weight, which if they do fight again, it's not going to be at 147. Um, yeah. There's nothing really left for Crawford to accomplish at 147. Like this is eight, his eighth fight, eight knockouts, undisputed champ, getting up there in age 35. Probably hard for him to make 147. We know it's really hard for Spence uh, to do it. As much as I would like to see a boots fight, because I think they kind of fight in like a similar type of style, switch, switch hitting, uh, offensive minded, just so damn talented. I just think it's just not the right time for that. So that really like what's next then? I mean, the rematch, like uh, don't want to see it. Uh, no need for it. It's contractually obligated. Yeah. And Spence is already asking for it. Spence's bio on, can I say Twitter on X or uh, whatever social media is 154. I don't want to see a rematch, Chris. I don't think there is a need for it. They, you can't even sell the public on it. The only possible way you can sell it is to say this one's at 154 and maybe Spence won't be weight trained. But geez, man, spent something something off was off about Spence uh, in, in that fight. Not taking anything away from Crawford, but something that was an Errol Spence that we saw Saturday. Yeah, and I agree with you 100. percent As as a man who's fought the man, watched the man for many many years, that that was not Errol Spence. I'm not taking anything away from 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 Crawford from Bud. I mean, incredible top to bottom virtuoso performance against a very dangerous guy. But Spence looked off before, even before the first bell. So is it weight drained? Is it, is it everything catching up the car accidents, the, the, the boozy lifestyle he led a few years ago? Is it all the punishment? Cause he's a very in your face kind of guy. Um, and I've heard there's, there's legendary stories about his sparring part, his sparring sessions over the years. So, you know, that stuff adds up a lot of the damage that happens, you know, in, in boxing that you see in the ring is from, is from the gym. So, yeah, I, I I don't know, but um, hey, what about Tim Zhu? Tim Zhu, I mean, I know fight. I know he's not he's not the megastar that we're looking at, but he has probably more he's more well known than than Boots. Um, he's at fifty four, he's undefeated as well, and I don't know. It gives me the, it gives me a feelings of um of Jeff Horn for Crawford, right? Jumping yeah. up, fighting an Australian, a guy who's way bigger that everyone's like, oh, he's too big, and then Crawford does what he does. So interesting fight. Yeah, I want to see what happens. Another wrinkle to the Charlo, Canelo, Crawford, Zoo saga now that we have in our hands is like what happens with those other belts? Like, are they going to relinquish all the belts? Charlo has said, don't worry, I'm coming back down to 154. Easier said than done to go from 168 back down to 154. Charlo's no no kid. He's like in his early 30s. I think he's like almost the same age as Canelo, which is wild to think about. So yeah, if Zoo can like find his way, if they can make a a Charl a, a Zoo Crawford, if they can make a, a Zoo Crawford fight for one belt at 154, two belts at 154, that kind of like delays the timeline a little bit for Charlo to get back into the picture for for that one. I like that option a, a lot, actually. I would love to see Zoo versus Crawford. I'd not be surprised if that's something we hear next. But back to Spence, like wait, wait, hold on, real quick. I am go not going to take credit for that one. I got that from Paulie Manaji. He said it first. So I'm not I'm not taking the credit for Well, I mean, it's he, not like groundbreaking. He brought it up. He brought it up and I was like, "Oh, that's actually really good." So it just be making me thinking about it cuz I was I was still so in a, in the in the fog of war <laughs> after after the fight that I wasn't really thinking about what's next so much. And then he had brought that fight up and I'm like, "Ooh, okay, makes Chris, a lot of sense." You really are a journalist. You really are a media guy cuz you're crediting other media guys, which is like a it, journalism 101 I'm move. Stealing ideas from my, but my it, guy. I it's know. not also not like a groundbreaking thing. There's only so many no. fighters at 154, so we just plug in the guy that Charlo uh, was supposed to fight. If we could have a redo though, I think Canelo should be fighting Benavides. Charlo should be yes. fighting <laughs> in, in Dan's perfect optimistic world. Yeah, okay, go on. And Charlo should be fighting Zoo. Crawford should mm -hmm. fight the winner of Zoo Charlo. We can get a redo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
man, it's all meticulous. So crazy because like the paths, the all the different paths that could have, would have, should have. Right. That's why I think this Charlo Canelo fight. I love it. Don't get me wrong, but it's like if we could have just waited after Spence Crawford to figure out, you know, it would have been a little more clear. Interesting. You know, PBC's making big fights. Can't complain about a Charlo Canelo fight. We like that fight, but no one really thought about Crawford. I guess it was hard to figure out a winner of Spence Crawford or look past it. Like you always say, like, I'm not looking past the fight. Like, well, when we get to Monday, that's when we'll think about other But fights. also the outcome matters, too. So yeah. so even if Spence had lost, but it was it was more competitive or, or competitive or if it was a close fight or whatever, um, and then... Maybe then, even then. So even then, if if Crawford's like, you know what, I'm saying at 47, you can go kick rocks at 54 because mm-hmm. I have the choice. I won. And then then we look at Spence and we're like, oh, we can see Spence and Canelo next. We can right? see Spence, you know. And then, but yeah, that's 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 that's, that's what I mean about all the crazy routes that we could have, right. would have, should have gone. But now this outcome, which is probably the least thought of outcome, not not saying that. Listen, Crawford winning, sure. But like complete domination to the point where everyone's saying that Spence should retire and that he doesn't deserve a rematch and probably doesn't deserve any of those other big fights is you know it's wild. Yeah, I think that's you're absolutely right. Yeah, like no one had Crawford in a domination, so we were not planning that out. What we were planning was oh Spence Canelo could happen one day. Uh, that has that ship has sailed. But going back to Spence now and, and what's next for him. Um, there are a lot of stuff floating around the internet. Internet's a crazy place, especially boxing Twitter. Just look at some of the things that have happened after Spence Crawford. Um, wild stuff. Deep in the weed stuff. Um, maybe RIP chicken talk. Uh, you probably don't even know what that is. But uh, a lot of crazy things have happened on Twitter after Spence Crawford. Um, I've seen. I've been sent this video of a neurologist talking on Spence, saying that he looked like a guy that was on marijuana before the fight. Look like a guy that's suffering from brain damage. That's tough. Like, if you're not treating the guy, you're just, uh, I don't know. You, you, uh, speculation. Gonna, it's, speculation. It's, you know, and just so we're not putting out fake news, it, w- it was, the guy said that his wife said that he looked like he was on mar- marijuana when he first walked okay, out. even worse. And then, the neurolog- and then the neurologist said, well, that's the way you look when you have neurological damage. So, um, yeah, just so we're reporting properly. But, yeah, man, I, if, you, if, if you haven't seen the, the, the reports, the, the man's medical record. If you haven't seen him in front of you, it's just speculation and it's getting a lot of clicks. It's making, it's making its rounds. And even though he had some really good points and things that make sense, it, it doesn't he, and, until he's had the man in front of him and seen the medical reports, you can't do stuff like that. Uh, it, it, it becomes clickbait at that point. Yeah, it was clickbait. Um, it doesn't show, it doesn't deny the fact that he looked off spent, not taking mm-hmm. anything away from Crawford down from a jab in the first, the first knockdown. Um, yeah. balance. He's off. getting rocked with punches going backwards, but yeah, heel towing it in the ring when he used to have some good in and out. There's definitely some things you know he was off, but weight, weight, you know, weight training can do that. Being weight trained can really suck the life out of out of your style, out of your physical strength, out of your your durability. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of things. I had tweeted afterwards that that was a a career ending type of loss, not because I think he went into a fight and he lost and he can never recover mentally from it. Uh, we'll never see Spence fight again because he lost to Crawford. No, I meant like physically. Like mm-hmm. Dame Lillard saw, said the same thing. Like he was talking with Joe Tess, our, our, our buddy. Like that's like a, you'll never be the same after that type of beat. It wasn't just like a, a deci- you know, like a TKO loss. Like from the fifth round on, Crawford outlanded Spence 131 to 53. Like when you get into that territory, like that's when it gets it gets ugly. And that's why I thought the fight should have been stopped so much earlier. Especially if you have this contracted rematch. If you know in six, seven months you're going to be fighting again. where There's no shame in throwing it in the towel and say, listen, let's give our guy, Errol, another chance to win a fight in seven, eight months from now. Like, Because he was, outside of a, a shot from the gods, he wasn't going to come back and win that fight from the fifth round on. From the fifth round on, I didn't enjoy it as we were no, there we ringside. Were, we were right next to each other saying that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. <clears throat> it wasn't wasn't necessary for him to take those 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 shots those last couple of rounds. But Spence is a dog, man. He was still trying. He was trying to time that overhand left, and he landed one, he landed one real good one. But then you know at that point, that's the thing when your balance is off, when you're hurt. And I can I can refer back to my my time spent in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Like, dude, when you're when you get hit with a shot that that throws off your equilibrium and you're you're hurt from multiple rounds later, I was good at avoiding 
Pacquiao's follow-ups. I wasn't getting hurt consistently all round, every round the way Spence was. But when you're hurt like that and you have your balance is off, your power is gone, your coordination is gone, your defense is gone, your ability to throw hard punches, like clean hard punches, your speed, because Spence never looks so slow. He, he was throwing overhand lefts that literally looked like they were in slow motion. Yeah. And Crawford was just catching and shooting. Bang. He was like, yeah, throw at me. Please throw at me. I'm gonna I'm I'm so much quicker than you. I see it coming. But also he it was it was a damaged version of of Spence. He was so hurt from that first knockdown. I don't think he ever recovered. And like I said, he he had no defense to get away from from those shots. I, the southpaw position really put him in a bad place. Yeah. What he normally does from a southpaw position where he dips to, mm-hmm. to avoid the right hands puts him right in line for the left hands. He dips down over his over to his left side and the left hands are coming over the top nonstop. So he never had any kind of reprieve to recover and get that equilibrium back. And that showed all night long. Wow. It, it was his footwork looked heavy. His punches looked slow. The power looked eh. It was more thudding than explosive the mm-hmm. way that, that Spence normally throws. And Crawford felt it, knew it. He knew all of that. So that's yeah, that's scary. why that's why it became such a such a bad beating as it went on. When you put it like that, that's so scary. Like you're behind the eight ball physically, well, maybe mentally a little bit, and you're going up against a guy who's on the top of his powers, the most accurate power puncher in boxing in Terrence Crawford. That's why Spence had thought. That's why he has so much respect, and that's why I'm not I'm not I really cringe when I see like a like a Stephen A. Smith call for his retirement, or I cringe when I see a lot of people speculating on uh his condition because he's one of the most respected guys in the sport. I mean, everyone looks up to Errol Spence because he doesn't make excuses. Even after the fight did not make an excuse. Bounce back from car accidents, like very, very um, re- uh, a guy that's always there, uh, stand up guy. So it's really hard to watch. That was another reason why it was hard to watch because Spence is such a good dude and like a solid ambassador uh, for boxing. We'll see what's next. I mean, I'm sure he's having these tough conversations with his dad was in the corner with Derek James, who's been in his corner since day one. Like, I hope they're having these conversations. I'm not going to sit here and call for his retirement because who the hell am I? Uh, to say such a thing. I just hope that they make the right decision um, because that was a really, really brutal fight to watch from like the fourth or fifth round on. Um, but he's going to be at 154. There's a lot of fights for him there. Um, I want to hear from Spence a little bit after the fact. In the in the moment, he's like, yeah, I want to rematch and, and all that. Like a fighter's going to say that. Like I'm sure you've wanted to say the same thing after a fight. You're you're just so reared up, you know, geared up after a big fight. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're you're speaking from pride at that point. You know, you're you you lost, you're hurt, you're you're embarrassed. You know, your 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 pride is hurt, and you want to get that back. I've I've lost fights and been like, I want to fight tomorrow. That guy, I want to fight him again tomorrow. <laughs> like you know, immediately afterwards, I want that next fight right back. Like that's just that's just the competitive nature of it. Um, I mean, first and foremost, I always say this: you got to worry about his health. He's got to make sure he's you know gets everything checked out. I'm sure they're doing all that. He's got to go home to his family, take some time off, training camps are long and hard. Um, the build-up to that fight was is very draining. And then decide from there what he, what he wants to do. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's up to him. Yep. It's As long as he is medically cleared, it is up to him whether he wants to fight moving forward. And um, that's it. There's, there's nothing more to talk about that in terms of should he retire or not. Good point. Um, if these two guys do move up to 154, the best thing they can do is eat. And the best way to eat is with HelloFresh, Chris. Take a bite out of summer with HelloFresh. From chef-crafted seasonal recipes to their new fresh and fit summer menu, HelloFresh brings you flavor right to your doorstep. I love it because I'm always here at the office working, burning the midnight oil, bringing you the best boxing show in the world. So when I get home, I'm tired. I'm not ready to go food shopping. I get to my door. There's a whole box of food waiting for me. It's peak time for summer produce. HelloFresh makes sure you get all the best picks all season long. Their ingredients travel from farm to your door in less than seven days for quality you can taste. Chris, did you know that HelloFresh offers more than just delicious dinners? Uh, I did. I've had HelloFresh delivered to my home before. But more than just dinners, they have snacks, Chris. They have sides. Oh, and more oh, that, for your weekly news. order. Simply shop HelloFresh Market. Take your pick from curated selection of over 100 items. Make your home the, the hangout place. Chris has a new house with a fancy backyard with palm trees. Now you can make it the hangout place with HelloFresh uh, key lime pot pie. <laughs> key lime pie. Uh, backyard bratwurst. Mm. HelloFresh Market makes summer entertaining in a cinch. Quality proteins. Chris loves protein. Fresh produce. For many different lifestyles. HelloFresh. I think this is the best deal we've ever given out for all of our partners that we've worked with. No disrespect to PPV.com because we gave away five pay-per-views. I was going to say, I was, I was like, oh, I, the deal we just did was pretty short. Pretty I retract. Pretty cool. Second best is HelloFresh.com. 
If you use code BOXING50, <laughs> you get 50% off plus free shipping. They're basically giving away food with our code BOXING50. That's HelloFresh.com slash BOXING50. Use code BOXING50. 50% off plus free shipping. Okay? Yeah, that's pretty kick-ass. Yeah. But- and HelloFresh, like, listen, I'm, you, you guys know, everybody, everybody at home knows I cook. Everybody sees my Instagram. They see all the things I put together. I was pretty impressed with with the delivery of HelloFresh that I got in terms of putting stuff together. Uh, food was fresh. It was tasty. And the, the recipes were were fun to do. Anyone could follow them. Even Dan. Dan could do them. It's crazy. Dude, I'm... I'm- not really a sharp guy, and I can put yeah, those. I mean, we just heard you speak. We know. <laughs> I can't even put words <laughs> together, and I'm a broadcaster. Uh, but when it comes right. to HelloFresh, uh, I'm in. So thanks to them for uh, teaming up with us in Inside Boxing Live. Last topic, Chris. It's during this fight week, uh, Devin Haney versus Regis Progray was announced. I thought it was a very odd way or timing of that because it got sucked up into the Spence Crawford uh, vacuum there. But October 28th, Devin Haney's getting in the ring with Regis Progray at 140 pounds. For Progray's WBC 140-pound strap, uh, the wrinkle here is that Progray's petitioned, uh, excuse me, Haney petitioned to the WBC that he wants to keep hold of his 135-pound uh, belt, um, which they allowed. They granted it. That's not without precedent. Uh, Canelo was able to move up to fight Bivol and keep his belt. Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor. So it's been done before, but I like this fight. I know that many people want to see Haney Shakur. They want to see Haney Tank. But Haney now going from Lomachenko, from Cambosos, right into a fight with Progray at 140. This guy's building quite a resume and quite a legacy if he can pull off this win. First of all, cool. I got three things to say, though. Number one, I like the fight. It's a good fight. Number two, I'm not surprised at all. I, I Especially at the Progray at his last fight, fighting a guy who was not known as a boxer and a mover, boxed and moved and, and gave him trouble. I'm sure Team Haney saw that and were like, ooh, we can beat that guy now. Yeah. So going right for it. Um, too, and also everyone saying, oh, you're ducking this guy, you're ducking that guy. Okay, yeah, he's going for the Ruguru. He's going right to him. So got, got to tip your hat there as, as a boxing fan. He's going right for a world champion in a new weight class. And the guy's a tough guy who's been avoided for a couple of years. Then lastly, third, that holding on to the belt thing. I do not like that at all. What are we doing? He's not coming back down to 35. He's 25 years old. He's going to move up to 40, fight this guy, win, lose, or draw, and then suck back down to 35 after he's been talking about how much trouble he has making 35 for so long. I just don't see that. I don't understand why that's being available because it's keeping other good top fighters from being able to be vying for those belts. And and we have so many great fights at 35 to make. When there's a belt on the line, it brings good guys together. We want that. I don't know. We, 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 the, the governing bodies keep shooting itself, keep shooting boxing yeah. in the back. Literally. I was going to say shoots itself in the foot, but no, that's not boxing. <laughs> it's shooting boxing in the back. Um, the one wrinkle is the WBC is calling it a champion in recess. Uh, so that means that Shakur versus Lomachenko will now fight for the vacant WBC title. And if if Haney wants to go back down to 135, he gets first crack at it with a 50-50 split. So at least with Haney, he has options. As we've talked about this before, Haney loves options. The guy moves like a politician. Uh, he's crafted his, his career beautifully. More props to him because it's a very tough business. But he's keeping his options open. He he goes and beats Progre, and then he looks at what Javante is doing. He looks at the winner of Loma and uh, Shakur. He looks at what Tiafimo is doing at 140. That's a great place to be at. I understand. If, and if the WBC is going to allow it, then you might as well try and ask for it, and he got it. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you would I'm do so it too. Uh, no, listen. I'm not knocking Haney at all. I'm knocking the governing box. Right. I don't – I just – for allowing this 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 shenanigans to go on, because that's I mean that's the best word for it. Uh, spell that for me, Dan. S H E N A N. I was kidding. Nobody wants to hear you. No, no, I G A N S. This is not good. This is not good podcast. Um, Nailed but, that. Well done. Well done. Well, put me on the spot um, like that. I can spell. But it's it, it is it is it's it's governing bodies doing what they do. You know, it's it's you know for ways for them to make keep keep the money line coming in and and keep yeah. other things attached to, to multiple belts at a time. Right. It's just, yeah, it's the, the period of the sport goes out the window with those guys. Mauricio Suleiman's like, wait a sec. And we can also get 3% from Loma and, and Shakur, two champions, WBC champion recess. Then we get a, a, a vacant WBC champion. We get Tank involved. Yeah, so I understand why the WBC call. Like you said, we're not, this isn't on Haney because it's just smart business moves uh, from him. But at least the silver lining of it is at least Shakur and Loma getting in the ring. That's an awesome fight. And, that beca- and that's a WBC, the, the champ. 
At 135. So at least we're getting, like, the silver lining of it is, like, we're getting a really good fight coming out of it. I mean, if if that's the fight that gets made. I mean, I love that fight. It's a fight that I've been calling for for a while. I, 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 I see that happening at some point. I just hope it happens sooner than later. If Loma takes it, too. There's, there's no... Right, that's what I mean. Like, if this fight actually happens. Yeah, he might not just... He might de- de- decline it. I mean, he's 35 years old. Does get a lot of shots, Loma. No one gets more opportunities than, than Lomachenko. But if he wasn't a very close fight with Haney. There isn't many more out there that deserve it. Tank Davis hasn't said a, a word or, like, issued anything... His hand or showed his hand on if he wants to fight for a title at 135 because those, those are there. So Haney Progre is set for October 28th. A lot of fans are looking for, man, I have a Spence Crawford hangover. There's no big fights on the horizon. I mean, it's not a huge fight, but at least it's something to look forward to. Uh, Canelo it's a Crawford. Fight. Yeah, it's, Canelo Crawford. It's a, it's a fight fans fight, too. Not Canelo Crawford. That would be sick. Canelo uh, Charlo. I can see that. For, dude, I, I'm, that's not out of the realm of possibility in the future. I would wait, though. 160? I don't know, man. It's a it's low 60s. I, Catch I weight, like 164. And, I mean, listen, I've seen I've seen pictures of Crawford on the scale where he weighed damn near 180 pounds, so. Wow. Look at us. Canelo. A simple misspoke by me. Another misspoke. Crawford, Canelo. One day. Could happen. Who knows? It's crazy, this boxing world. All right, that's our show. I'm running out of words. Um, still on a Vegas hangover. What do you got this weekend, man? I've been heading to San Diego. Can you believe that? For a uh, bachelor party. I'm going to watch Jake Paul and Nate Diaz get in the ring from a bar. Uh, what do you got going on this weekend? Well, I got the overtime show, and then I'll I'll be back. Back to SoFlo. Yeah. Where is that? Overtime's in Atlanta. Nice. So, yeah, that's so another for me. Thank God. But uh, dude, San Diego, that's 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 probably my favorite city to visit. Yeah. I love that place. I'm Great excited. place for a bachelor party. Good yeah. good, good job. Shout out Tom Beecher, my boy, for, for, for a long time getting married and, and we're going to have some fun. Have fun in overtime, man. That's going to be cool. There's another player in boxing. Uh, they do really good work in football and college basketball and, and they're awesome brand. So that's great. The Chris Algieri media brand is growing. Dude, you're not going to be able to turn on boxing news without seeing me. <laughs> This whole month. I'm doing eight shows. That's eight shows. I'm going awesome, from show bro. to show to show. Love that. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. We'll be back next weekend to break it all down and preview some more fights. Keep your hands up at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. DM Chris if you have another gig for him. Because uh, he needs more. 